So we've already talked about how that the gifts of the Holy Spirit actually flow through compassion. When you feel the love and the compassion of God flow out of you towards another person, then that's God. And once God begins to start flowing, God is a supernatural God. And the Lord will flow through you and accomplish supernatural things. So I want to share with you about how you can flow in these supernatural gifts of God. The first step is you need to recognize this. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Basically, what this is saying is don't minister to other people as a mere human being. You know, if you are ministering to someone else and if you believe that God is inspiring what you're doing, then say, you don't have to use the words, but you don't have to say, thus saith the Lord, but speak as if it's coming from God. I think many times in an effort for us to get down and relate to people, we um, cheapen what God is saying. It should be spectacular in a sense. Now, you can get into a ditch on either side of this road, but I'm saying you need to let people know that it's God speaking through you. You know, often when I call people forward in a prayer line, God shows me things about them, and I start operating in a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, and I tell people things about them that I couldn't know except by a gift of the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes, there's visible, physical manifestations to know that I'm exactly right on. People will start crying, doing things like this. But I always try and go out of my way to say, I don't know you. There's no way I can know this. This isn't me speaking to you. This is God. I want them to recognize that it's God speaking to them and that it's not me operating in ESP or something like that. It's a gift, a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So you need to recognize that God has equipped every one of us. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 7, it says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. This isn't only talking about to every male, it's talking about every mankind, every human being, whether it's male or female. Every person has received a gift of the Holy Spirit, every born-again person. And this is because God has a purpose for your life, not only to get you blessed, but so that you can be a channel to blessing other people. God wants to flow through you, and this is what we call the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The ones that I operate in predominantly, I believe that I've operated in every gift of the Holy Spirit at one time or another. And I would say this, that anybody, if you are in a situation where you are the only Christian there and there's a need and a person needs to be ministered to, I wouldn't hesitate to pray and ask God for any one of the gifts, whatever it takes to minister to that need. And just like me, I believe I've operated in all of the gifts at one time or another. But the ones that are dominant in my life. The ones that I operate in on a consistent basis are a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, and a discerning of spirits. A word of knowledge is just knowing something that you didn't discern through physical, natural means, but it, God just told you. For instance, God's told me people's names before. I've never seen the person before, and I've been able to tell them their name and say, God tells me that your name is... <laughs> And you know what? You're either right or wrong on that. And I've seen it proven to be right. I've called out people and told them what's wrong with them. I've told them things that it is impossible to know except by the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible calls a word of knowledge. Then a word of wisdom, I believe, is what to do about this knowledge that you've got. You'll find that these three tend to flow in uh, uh, conjunction with each other. They accompany each other. God will, first of all, give you a word of knowledge, tell you something about a person, not for the purpose of criticizing, but helping them. Then He'll give you a word of wisdom, which tells you what to do with that knowledge that you have. Say, for instance, God has shown me before that a person was going to commit suicide. They had a spirit of suicide. Well, that's no good if I just say, God shows me you're trying to kill yourself. 
then I have to put with it that the Lord is saying, and I'll, I'll turn this around, that God loves you. God is talking to you through me. The Lord wants you to know that your life is important and valuable. And see, if I, if I discern the situation right, they know it's God spoken, speaking through me. And then I start telling them these words of wisdom about how God loves them, how God's going to change this situation and work it out. And I, that's how it all works together. I discern maybe a spirit of suicide. God gives me a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, how to function in it. But it all happens. These things happen to every person. Some of you may say, I've never had a gift of the Spirit. You may not have developed it. You may not have seen a manifestation that confirmed it to you. But the truth is, this scripture says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, every person, to profit with all. Now, there are different ways of operating. That's what it's saying when it says there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same Spirit. And there are even differences of administrations, but it's the same Lord. You know, I have a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a discerning of spirits. Other people who may have the exact same gifts could operate in them differently. They could administer it differently, but it's still the same Lord just using all of us according to our personalities and different things on the inside of us. But every person, I don't care who you are, you do have a gift of the Spirit. It's just a matter of you discovering what it is and learning how to flow in it. Here are some of the gifts that are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. It says in verse 9, To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now see, I'd already mentioned the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and this adds some more to it. In all, there are nine gifts of the Spirit listed right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And these aren't the only gifts of the Spirit. It also says in Romans chapter 12, verse 8, it says, He that exhorts on exhortation. It's talking about waiting on your ministry. If you are an exhorter, then wait on your exhortation. He that gives, let him do it with simplicity. He that rules with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. These are old English words, but the word exhort here means that if you are an encourager, I believe that's a gift of the Spirit. There are some people that just have an ability to encourage people. When they walk into the room, people get encouraged. You know what? That's a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. Giving is a gift of the Spirit. Don Crow, who is doing these discipleship evangelism lessons with me, is a person that has a gift of giving. I've seen God tell him to give $26.82 down to the exact penny, and it would be exactly what a person needed. He has a gift of giving. He lives to give. That's a supernatural gift of the Spirit. Some people just desire to be a blessing and they want to prosper so that they can be a blessing to other people. All Christians do that to a degree, but some people, this is their ministry gift. They may be working a secular job, but they have a gift of giving and they just channel money into the gospel. And it says, uh, let him do it with simplicity. In other words, don't blow a trumpet in front of yourself and use it to show and grandstand. He that rules with diligence, that's talking about a gift of administration. You know, I've got a lot of people that work for me in this ministry, and if I didn't have people that could administer and keep our finances straight and deal with all of the employee issues and get all of the timesheets in and write the checks and pay the bills and balance the books, then I couldn't do the ministry that I'm doing. That is a supernatural gift from God that some people are endued with. And it says another one is, He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. There are some people that they just have a gift of mercy. They are a person that just has mercy on people. That is a supernatural gift, and there's many others. These are just some. But I wanted to get across in this lesson that every one of you do have a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not a matter of do you have one. You do, according to the Word of God. What you've got to do is discover what your gift is. And there's a lot of information on that, a lot of things that I could share with you. But I tell you this, that if you would just reach a place where you say, Father, I believe these scriptures, and I believe I've got a gift, reveal it to me. And if you get to where you are focused on that and really desiring to know, God will show you what your gifts and what your abilities are. 
AND THEN YOU CAN GO OUT AND FLOW THROUGH THOSE GIFTS TO IMPACT OTHER PEOPLE.